Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Did you miss me because I missed you? You don't need to answer that because it was rhetorical. I'm super excited to be here. This is my first YouTube video since I turned 28. Um, I'm feeling a lot older. My bones are a bit more brittle. As you can see, I'm in a different location today. This is my bedroom. Uh, a nice spot of paint that doesn't match the rest of my room is, is to, my, to my side here. And the reason why is because um, I've, I've not really done anything today as I went out last night and I twisted my ankle and, and, and I'm in quite a lot of pain, I'll be honest. I'm trying to disguise it by just laughing it off and pretending that it might not be broken, but you know, the truth of the matter is that it quite possibly is. And, uh, and for a drag queen in heels a lot of the time, could cause to be a bit of a problem, especially now that I'm freelance. Anyway, regardless, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. As some of you know, if if you follow what if you follow what I actually do, um, I have a new residency here in Manchester. Um, I now perform at a venue called Oscars, Oscars Bar on Canal Street. I am now there pretty much every other Thursday, I think. But today, in in honour of that, I wanted to do um, something really unoriginal. I wanted to go through my top 10 favourite musicals because, as I say, I'm in a bit of pain and, and musicals make me make me feel better. So I've got a nice cup of tea. Go and get one. I'll, I'll wait for you to go and get one. Or, or just pause the video. And then when you come back, give give the video a, a thumbs up if, if you like my content so far. It would be nice. And, and and also subscribe. Make sure that you click the, the bell notification as well because that will let you know when my new videos are coming out. So top 10, so this is, this is number 10. That's right guys, it's Little Shop of Horrors. I love Little Shop of Horrors. No, I love it. I think the music's really good. I think that the um, that the story is, is pretty hilarious. I also love how Little Shop of Horrors is done on stage as well. It's not like Chicago where the band are on stage and people are doing moving. I'm moving around the, the band. So um, number two, uh, or number nine, sorry, is Songs for a New World. Now technically this isn't a musical as it doesn't follow a narrative um, and it is just a collection of songs. It's stunning, it really is. Um, Jason Robert Brown is probably my favourite composer of all time. I will go far enough to say that. I think he's absolutely incredible. So Songs for a New World, as I say, it's, it's it's a collection of, of songs that basically all run on the same theme of making a decision. I love it. It's got um, Stars on the Moon, which I remember singing with my very good friend who lives in New York, Sarah Sabinsky. Back at drama school at Rose Bruford, we, we, we used to go and sing uh, that song and we turned it into a fabulous duet. It used to be on YouTube. It used to be on here, um, but I'm not sure, <laughs> sure where, it, where it went. I love songs from New World and Just One Step as well. And I'm not afraid of anything and I'd give it all for you. It's it's an incredible musical. That's why it's in my top ten. It's perfection. It really is. Number eight. Yes, that's right, it's Gypsy. So good. So good. I um, sometimes work on the burlesque circuit as opposed to just the cabaret circuit, and this is this is one of my favourite stories of all time. I think it's absolutely great. It's very cleverly written, and it's it's got some really beautiful music in it. Number seven. Phantom of the Opera. 
Phantom of the Opera was the very first musical that I ever saw. Um, my grandmother and my mother took me along to go and see it, and it was incredible. It really was. I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. All of the music from Phantom of the Opera, um, especially Twisted Every Way. It's like a minute and a half, but I think it's my favourite minute and a half of the entire show. It's, it's really good. I love Phantom. Number six is... Hello, my name is Elder Price, and I would like to share with you the most amazing book. Book of Mormon, by the creators of South Park, which means it's hilarious. It really is. It's rude, it's crude, it's got jokes about everything, and I love it. It's, uh, it's very good. It's very funny. If you haven't seen it, go and see it. Go in with an open mind. But it's it's a bloody great musical, and I love it. I love everything about it. Number five Sugar. is Waitress. Sugar, fire. Written by Sarah Berry Ellis, who wrote Love Song and Gravity, which I used to sing when I was at secondary school, being a big, fat homo. And I used to go and play it in the, um, play it in the music rooms um, when I was avoiding PE lessons. And she, she then came out with this banger of a musical, um, it was starring Jessie Muller, who I absolutely love. She was in Beautiful, um, which unfortunately didn't make this list. However, I do love it. I really do love it. Don't hate me for not putting it in the list. This is this is an incredible musical, um, and you can tell that Sarah Berry Ellis wrote Sarah. You can tell that Sarah Berry Ellis wrote it. Top four, top four. Number four is. I don't think you can hear that. Maybe? I don't know. I'll soon know when I, uh, when I play it back. But it's Evita. Um, one of the only Andrew Lloyd Webber musicals that I can actually stand. That and obviously Phantom. But I'm not a fan of Andrew Lloyd Webber. I think his music is, is um, pretty docile in some cases. If you compare composers, Andrew Lloyd Webber to Jason Robert Brown, for instance, um, Jason's music, Jason, as if we we're on first name terms, Jason's music has more layers to to it. There, there are so many. It's very. I find it very much like sometimes how sometimes music is is incredibly complex. And yeah, okay, music's always based on themes and uh, and how the the music's put together, but. With Andrew Lloyd Webber, it's just very <sighs> poppy, like first chorus, first chorus. No, I like a bit more to my music, but Evita is incredible. Patti LaPone's Evita, of course, not Madonna's, um, and I know that many people um, probably only know Madonna's Evita because she, she made it into a film and lowered all the keys of the original because she couldn't sing like um, any of the greats. But that's just my humble opinion. If you haven't seen um, Patti LuPone's performance of this at the Tony Awards um, way back when, uh, I will put a link down in the description box to that video because it's absolutely incredible. So go and check it out. Top three. Top three. And they're all actually... It's difficult to put them all into... To, to not combine these into one because... I love all of these. I love all of these. Starting with Thoroughly Modern Millie. A brilliant musical. An absolutely incredible musical. Funny story. Um,
brilliant overture. It, it just really sets the scene. Um, set in the 20s, um, which is one of my favourite eras anyway, um, obviously prior to 1928 when everything went tits up for America um, and the world, I think, at that point. But um, yeah, I, I think it's brilliant. It's stylish. There's some GNS in there. I performed a lot of Gilbert and Sullivan from the age of 15. I got to play uh, Colonel Fairfax in Yeoman of the Guard, which was pretty cool, pretty cool. It's, it's yeah, it, it's really good. Um, Gimme Gimme is one of my favourite songs from from that musical. And Forget About the Boy, oh, they're, they're just brilliant. I first saw it or heard about it when I saw Julie Andrews perform it in, in the movie. I thought the movie was great. And then I saw the musical, and uh, yeah, it needs to come to the West End. If any producers of the West End happen to watch this, I'll help. I'll, I'll do it. I'll even play Millie. Oh, Millie and Drag, that would be so good. Wouldn't it be such a good thing? Let's let's do that. My top two, uh, I literally couldn't, couldn't put these two in. I, I couldn't pick between these two. However... For the point of the video, I've kind of had to. My second favourite musical of all time is... The Wild Party. The Wild Party. Andrew Lipper's The Wild Party. I love it. I love it. Um, there is actually a video on my channel of me singing the life of the party from the wild party. I think it's brilliant. I think the, I'm a huge jazz fan, so the fact that the the music throughout it is is very jazzy really appeals to me. I think the story is great. I actually think Adina Menzel is quite good in it as well, which is which is good. Yeah. And I would love to play all the parts. Like it's one of those those musicals where I literally would l wouldn't care which part I was cast in, because obviously I'd want to be Queenie or Kate, but more. But it's it's just incredible. I think it's so good. It's so much fun. The song "A Wild Wild Party" is is brilliant. There are ups, there are downs, and I think it depicts. Um, the twenties era in a in a really in a really great way. It's kind of the it's kind of you have thoroughly modern Millie, which is all hoity toity and the the upper class, and then you have the Wild Party, which is literally the vaudevillians of the era and how they survive and how they were living. So just that contrast alone, yeah, it's it's fantastic. Number one. Now this musical, I I actually love. Like I I, it affects me in a way that no other musical really does. Um, I think a lot of people can relate to to this musical on different on different levels. And this is it. The last five years, of course, it's Jason Robert Brown. I mean, after the way I went on about songs for a new world, of course, it's Jason Robert Brown. It's it's stunning. So it's about Kathy and Jamie, two characters that that meet once upon a time, but she's going backwards in time and he's going forwards in time. So it's like solo, 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 solo duet, solo, 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 solo duet. I'm not gonna tell you what it's really about because it kind of ruins it but you kind of know during the first number um what the premise is really um of the entire thing and it's just the journey that it takes 
to get to that point. But it's my all-time favourite. All-time favourite. I would really love to, to perform this as two men. I think it would it would give a completely different um a completely different twist on on things. But yeah, it's it's stunning. Um a film came out recently of it starring Anna Kendrick and the other man. God. Sorry. Don't know his name. I do know his name, but I can't think of it. And it was it was good. I remember I, I saw it. It was uh, I was at drama school when it came to um, to the UK, and it was at the Duchess. Yeah, it was at the Duchess uh, by Covent Garden, and I went on my own. Nobody else wanted to go and see this with me, and it was stunning. It really was. I think I cried all the way through. So I could make an interesting musical to actually perform in, but. I sing, I sing a lot of the last five years. I could, I like to sing the entire musical. Uh, but yeah, that's my top ten musicals. Um, I love them. I'm sorry if I didn't mention yours, but you never know. I might mention them in uh, the next video that I intend to do, which will probably be my worst, my top ten worst musicals. Drop it in the in the comments below. I, I'm interested to know what your favourite musicals are. Because after all, music makes the world go round. Oh, it's love that makes the world go round, isn't it? Hmm. Oh well. <laughs> but yeah. So that's that's it for today. Um, make sure that you, um, as I say, subscribe and click the bell notification because I make I make videos every single week. Or at least I, I try to. I have done so far. So thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel so far. I hope that you're enjoying the content. Um, I'm enjoying making it. And I will see you again very soon. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye.